need to talk about the revolving door. People moving back and forth between government and the private sector. George Osborne, the former Chancellor, is, we learn, being paid £650,000 a year to advise BlackRock, an investment manager, for four days of work each month. So why do they want him? I think George Osborne would bring a wealth of knowledge on geopolitical affairs, um, having been the Chancellor of the Exchequer of this country. He would also bring very good contacts around the world in governments and in the private sector. The knowledge and the contacts that somebody like George Osborne would have accumulated over his tenure are very valuable for a period of about three to five years. There is a Whitehall process for approving these things, the Advisory Committee on Business Appointments, or ACOBA. ACOBA approved Mr Osborne's plans and they've barred him from lobbying for two years. But lots of people who've been through ACOBA don't think too much of it. So ACOBA is this slightly eccentric body where when you leave government having been in a senior job, you have to get their permission in theory before you take on another role. In practice they have no teeth, if you disobey them there's literally nothing they can do about it. The process is slow, uh, it's hidden, you don't really understand how it works. They don't unfortunately give you straight answers to straight questions. So when I went through the process I asked them would I be allowed to come in and see government ministers to talk about my new role? Uh, and they will not answer questions of that sort, uh, which covers their back, because if you put your foot in it, they'll be able to say you broke the rules. But you're never really told quite what the rules are. The voluntary nature of ACOBA is a particular problem. 48 senior special advisers have left government since December 2014. But there are published ACOBA approvals for just 14. Jobs are not the only part of an ex-minister's life that gets regulated. Today we learned Gordon Brown is releasing a memoir. Perhaps slightly surprisingly, there is actually a rule book that governs what ex-ministers are allowed to put into their memoirs, the so-called Radcliffe Rules. And they can really be boiled down to three principles. The first principle is don't publish anything that damages national security. The second principle is don't publish anything that would damage our relations with other states. The third principle, though, is a bit odder. It states that ex-ministers shouldn't criticise any of the civil servants with whom they worked. In fact, they also state that ministers shouldn't even name civil servants who gave them specific advice. In short, the Radcliffe rules basically get in the way of ex-ministers scrutinising their former departments. This country does have a revolving door problem in a variety of sectors, but we should worry as much about middle-ranking officials who slip into the companies they're supposed to be regulating as we do about ex-ministers.